In today's episode of the podcast, I'll be sharing with you one finished object, one work in progress, and some plans that I have for an upcoming sweater project that's a little bit different than my typical. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor, and I will be your host. I'm coming to you today on what is a rather chilly and blustery day here in Henderson, Nevada. We are a small town right outside of Las Vegas, Nevada in the Southwest US. This is where I'm from and where I live with my husband, Brandon, our two boys, Ronan and Angus, our dog, Pepper, and our cat, Oscar. It is so lovely to have you here. Thank you so much for stopping by to check out the podcast. If you are new here, Welcome, and if you're a returning viewer and subscriber, welcome back. I don't have a ton to share with you guys today, as last week my son was homesick a few days out of the week, and it kind of slowed my momentum down on my knitting, as well as my work. I am the dyer behind Fiber for the People yarn, and there was a shop update scheduled for just this last Saturday, which had to be reworked to make up for the time that I lost. I'm just kind of being home and being present for my son who was homesick, who's all better now, everybody's better. Um, that Fiber for the People shop update, just for uh, FYI, is this Saturday, February 4th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So you can find out more information about that um, over on Instagram for Fiber for the People as well as fiberforthepeople.com and all of that is linked down below. But that's kind of a heads up on where I've been this last week, kind of working through that and just making sure that he's all better, ready to go to school and everybody's rolling smoothly. So I'm happy to say that everybody is well. We're doing well, but it's been a little bit of a whirlwind of a week. And so the knitting I have been working on has kind of been restricted to one um, project primarily after casting off another one that I'm really excited to share with you guys. But before I get started with my projects, I wanna encourage you to check out woolneedleshands.com. That's the website associated with the channel here. You can find the tip line where you can leave me suggestions on video ideas. You can be linked off to the merch shop. You can find the patterns that I have written and have for sale over there, as well as be linked off to my Ravelry shop but you can sign up for the Wool Needles Hands newsletter. And the newest issue of that newsletter is going to be going out not tomorrow, but the next day, and I want you to receive it. So definitely be sure to sign up for the newsletter over at woolneedleshands.com so you can be in the loop about all things Wool Needles Hands and all of my crafty endeavors that I have going on throughout the month. I also share those things here on the podcast, but it's just a nice way for me to communicate to you um, somewhat directly and give you a rundown of what I've been doing over the course of the last month. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into what I have for you guys today. And I'm gonna begin with a finished object. So I talk a lot about this particular pattern. These are the fire pit mitts. This is a pattern that I've written. It's by yours truly, as I like to say, it's available for purchase on Ravelry, as well as over at woolneedleshands.com. These are my favorite fingerless mitts. Now I've not knit all the fingerless mitts that there are to knit, but I absolutely love these. And yes, I'm biased. However, from what I hear from folks who have made the fire pit mitts, I am so happy to know that they are very um, loved, not only to knit, but also to wear. And I know that over the holidays, so many of you guys were knitting fire pit mitts for family members um, as gifts and that it worked, turned out really great and that they love their mitts. And that just makes my day like you don't even know. So that's what these are. These are a pair of fire pit mitts that I just finished for my mom. And I'm gonna go ahead and, well, here, show them to you before I gab on any more about them. So here they are. They are knit using Fiber for the People yarn, which is my own hand dyed yarn in the saffron color as the base yarn and the color Jupiter as the mohair that I'm holding with the base yarn. And in just a second, I'll show you those little cakes of yarn separately so you can see, but this is what they look like. They were gently steam blocked. So if you've watched me show on previous episodes of the podcast, the other pair of fire pit mitts that I um, knit prior to these, those ones were wet blocked, but these ones I decided I just wanted to steam block. And I think it's just fine. It works. Um, it's perfect for this particular little piece here. So I did it with a steamer, um, not an iron. I just used a little, you know, steaming, what, what, a, a steamer. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it, but that's all I did to block these and they blocked out beautifully. I'll go ahead and slip them on so you can see what they look like, but they are for my mom and she's going to be taking them with her when she heads up north to Northern Nevada, where she has a home up there. It's really cold up there right now. And I feel like these are really great for driving when it's cold um, or just being outside briefly just to keep your hands warm, but also give you the available your available fingers for doing, you know, finger things, I don't know. So one thing I can tell you about the pattern, if you purchased the pattern previously, you recently just received an update from me 
um, for the thumb gusset. So I went through the pattern and I received an email from somebody who was asking about how to execute the thumb gusset. And it made me realize that the way that I had written the thumb gusset instructions were kind of convoluted and need to be clear, not clarified necessarily, but simplified. And so the new pattern includes simplified thumb gusset instructions. It just makes a whole it, it makes making a thumb just a lot more streamlined with less instructions to read. And I'm really happy with the way that it reads these. I knit the thumb gusset ultimately using those instructions. And I feel like it's just so much more intuitive. So if you do have a previous copy of the fire pit mitts and you want to keep knitting them, but would like the, I don't know, maybe a little bit more uh, streamlined instructions, definitely download um, the latest copy of the pattern. It has been sent to you on Ravelry. Um, I have not sent it to the folks who have purchased it on my web website because that's a little bit more tricky for me to do because it would have to be done individually. So if you have purchased this pattern from me on my website and you would like the additional instructions for a more streamlined thumb, um, email me and I will shoot you a copy of the pattern. I didn't do anything. The thumb was, wor it worked fine in the previous pattern. So you still have a perfectly, um, you know, a, a great pattern. This is just a little bit more simplified. So just let me know if you have purchased the pattern from my website as you most likely did not receive the update and I will send you an update. No big deal. But that is um, my mom's fire pit mitts and I love them. I actually love them so much that as soon as I finished these ones, I cast it on to another pair. And I'm also going to show you the two yarns that I'm using here. So here's what I have so far of this new pair that I cast it on. I'm um, not much to speak of at the moment, but I love them and I would like to have my own in that particular combination of colors. So the base yarn that I'm using for those is this. It's Saffron Blue Faced Lester DK weight yarn. So it's 100% Blue Faced Lester, which, which is a breed of sheep. Um, and it's a DK weight yarn. And then this is the mohair, kid mohair silk that I'm pairing with it in the Jupiter colorway by Fiber for the People. It's mostly this kind of blackish, it's, it's kind of a little bit of a blue undertone black, and then it has intermittent sections of kind of bright color, like little bursts of color. So these two together look like this. And then when they're knit up, just, you know, one more time, they look like that. And at my, I was going for kind of a Southwesty vibe in terms of color. And I really think that I nailed it because I, I just love the way they look and they feel really good on that combination of yarn with the mohair. It's a really nice feel. I feel like the ones that I knit for myself um, about a month and a half, two months ago was a lighter pairing of yarn. So the weight of the yarn altogether was a little bit lighter. And so this fabric here is more dense. And I like that. I like a little bit more of a dense fabric. And that almost tells me that you could get away with knitting these on a heavy Aran, um, using the needle size that it calls for in the pattern. And you probably would really love that additional kind of um, density to the fabric, especially if you're knitting them for um, somebody who's going to be working with their hands outdoors a lot. That would just give them a little bit more fabric there that's a little bit more resilient, sturdy. I don't know, it'll stand kind of all of that uh, heavy wear and tear. So that's something I love about these is that it's pretty easy to adjust the yarn without worrying too much about it affecting the overall mitt. And also, do you know, I don't have my scale. Let me go grab my scale because I want to tell you how much yarn like weight wise I have left. Now I used, um, these were full, this was a full skein of DK weight yarn. Um, I knit these two at a time. So that's why I have it divided in half. So this was a full skein. I'm not going to count what I've started over here. So we'll just, you know, give or take, but here we go for what I have left of the DK weight yarn, give or take here, 47 grams. So 47 grams left here. So it's almost exactly a half of um, a skein of yarn to knit these because these weigh all together 56 grams. So, I mean, you could just subtract that out from full skeins of yarn and that gives you an idea of how much you would have left. But I have 40, what was it? 46 grams left of the DK weight and then these uh, mohair skeins are 50 grams for a whole skein. 19 grams left. Yeah. So, I mean, you can get two pairs of the short version of the fire pit mitts um, out of one skein of DK weight yarn, or excuse me, I should say worsted weight yarn, because I'm pairing a DK weight with a mohair to achieve essentially a worsted weight yarn. So it is a worsted weight pattern, but you can, you know, up the yarn size if you want a nice dense fabric. But 
that's kind of nice to know that you can get two short fire pit mitt pairs or whatever out of one full skein of worsted weight yarn. Okay, I wanted to share um, these socks because I mean, it's a work in progress and I wanna update you on where I'm at, but also to share with you a, um, a heel technique that I discovered myself. And this is called the boomerang heel. So on previous socks, I've done the no wrap, no gap, short row heel that I found kind of tutorials for by Googling and, and they were fine, but I feel like the last couple of socks, um, the last pair of sock socks <laughs> that I knit and then one sock before that I was executing this heel and I just wasn't having the same luck. It just was finicky. The yarn was extra soft. So there was lots of gapping going on um, and I just didn't love it. So I decided I wanted to seek out another option for a short row heel because I really love a short row heel, especially when you're knitting socks two at a time. It just seems like it's more, um, it's just, it seems more streamlined in my opinion. And so I found the um, Boomerang short row heel and the tutorial that I found for this was by the Addy company, the company that makes the, the knitting needles. It's a German company. And I wanna say that this particular tutorial, this article was probably initially written in German and translated to English because there are some like phrase, phrases that seem a little bit more wordy than necessary, but overall it's an excellent tutorial and it was very easy for me to understand. And that was after Googling and finding lots of written out tutorials that were really just not very clear. We're trying to utilize really weird algebraic equations for dividing your heel stitches into thirds and then using, you know, letters, like think of an algebraic equation that just weren't very intuitive for, um, trying to visualize, like plugging in and plugging and playing your values. Like one of them used, um, a letter for a numeral and the letter was O to refer to outside stitches. And every time that you see it in the instructions, you're thinking zero stitches. It just, I don't know. So I was on a journey, but I was also on a mission to find one that I could rely on and bookmark and come back to time and time again. And I feel like I did a pretty good job with this Addy one. So I'm gonna link to it down below in the description box. Chances are I will be popping up a screen grab so you can kind of see what it looked like um, in terms of how the instructions were laid out. But I really thought it was intuitive. It utilizes um, German short rows in that you're creating double stitches. Now, if you've never done a German short row before, double stitches probably doesn't make any sense or doesn't mean anything to you, but it's a, it's a technique for um, kind of manip manipulating your stitch so that it looks like you have two stitches on the needle where you when you only have one, and then you end up knitting that as one stitch. And I'm assuming it creates a really nice tight join in your stitches. I don't really know the purpose for it, I just know when you start seeing German short rows, you start see the instructions or seeing the instructions for creating double stitches. Um, the first section of the short row heel is where you execute what you see here. This is where the heel, the bottom of your foot sits when your heel is in the sock. The second section of the short row heel is to then execute this side of the heel. And this is where the um, back of your foot or kind of like your Achilles tendon would run up against this. So you're creating a little pocket. Uh, so you have the first half, you're going to be doing short rows, and then the second half, you're working out the opposite direction with short rows. And then in between those two halves, when you're executing the heel, there are two rounds where you carry a whole round around the entire like uh, circumference of the sock to create um, I don't know, like a little bit of a divide between the two portions. I know for some of us who don't have experience with sock knitting, this might sound like I'm speaking another language and I apologize, um, but it's kind of hard to explain. So I don't know if you can see right here, there's a row of stitches that are just plain stockinette stitches in between the two sections of the short row heel. That is what you achieve when you add a couple of straight rounds in between the two sections of the heel. And it just gives a really nice kind of ridge in between the front and the back of the short row heel. So all that is to say, it's a new technique for me. It There was a learning curve involved. I did have to tink back and fix a few things that I missed, but after doing it once, it makes perfect sense what you're doing. It's easy to read the instructions and follow. It may be one of those things that on your first sock, um, you, you know, slip up and make some mistakes, but then you realize the situation and then moving forward, it's, you know, it's no big deal, but I love it. I think it works really well. It's not too deep 
of a heel, but it looks to me like a really nice, comfortable heel. But we shall see, because they're for my dad's feet, and I will report back. But in the meantime, that's where I'm at with these. Just finished their short row heel, and I'm gonna be working on the foot next. These um, should be finished next time we speak, um, but we shall see, because actually, no, I'm fairly confident they will be, because I wanna get them to my dad so he can wear them while the weather is still pretty chilly. Okay, now speaking of things that I shall have finished <laughs> next time we meet, I know on the last episode of the podcast, I had mentioned to you that my Franken sweater um, would be finished ne next time that we met, which would be essentially right now. And also too, I had mentioned to you that I wanted to rename my Franken sweater to something else. And all of you guys suggested such cool names. I was like having so much fun reading your suggestions for what I should call my Franken sweater. And I will probably end up naming it one of the names that you guys suggested because they were all really good. Um, but I haven't chosen yet. This last week was crazy. Just feel like I couldn't get it together. <laughs> But here we are. Anyway, lo and behold, I have not finished my Franken sweater um, as I said that I would. And honestly, here's where my mind is at with my Franken sweater. We're just gonna continue calling it that for right now. I am thinking that the waist, the, uh, the hemline of my sweater, and I'm not pulling it out to show you because I didn't want this to be a long segment, but I think that it might be too tight in the hemline. So I think that I'm going to go back before I do the sleeves and I'm gonna pull that out and remove the decreases that I made right before that hemline and then re-knit that hemline because it's bugging me. It's, um, it just, it, it's, it's bugging me enough that it's making me not want to pick up the sweater. And that is an indication that something needs to change because in the last episode of the podcast, I emphasized that it would be fine, that it would block out. Um, and I think that anytime you're justifying something using it'll block out for something that you could fix relatively easily, right? Like if it's something that's just means you're gonna have to rip out the whole sweater to fix something that you did way back and it, it really could block out and you probably could live with it, then just live with it and, and it's fine. But this particular situation is something I could very well fix without having to take out too much knitting and it would make me feel so much better about finishing the sweater and also too, because I just don't think it's gonna block to the to the point that I need it to block to fit comfortably, go watch the previous episode of the podcast and I suspect you'll know what I'm talking about. However, that's where I'm at with that, is that I need to go back and make that change before I carry on with that sweater. And it's almost caused me um, to want to, to just, now I don't wanna let that languish. That's absolutely not my intention because I have full intention of finishing that sweater. I am uh, committed to it. However, a couple days ago, I put my Versal sweater over on my mannequin and I'll show you. Okay. So here is my Versal sweater. This is Gladys, by the way. She's my, my mannequin. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna move my chair and we're gonna let Gladys be center stage here. Can you see? Yeah. Okay, there she is. All right, so here's Gladys and she's wearing my Versal sweater by Albina McLaughlin. Albina is how you pronounce that, by the way, for all of you who were confused me. So this is being knit in um, Newtiden yarn, which is a Swedish unspun yarn. And I have learned that Newtiden um, means of the present or in the present or the time is now or something similar to that. And it's to be pronounced with kind of a separation and emphasis between new and Tiden or Tiden. So Newtiden. I'm learning and I love learning. So all of you who provide me with those very, like so many people reach out to me and in such a polite way, um, I don't wanna say they're educating me cause that sounds kind of like pushy. They're not, they're just providing me with background and like information because they know I'm not from these places, right? And I love that cause I'm learning like Albina McLaughlin. I didn't realize that it was Albina. I always had said Albiona, um, but it's Albina. And I appreciate knowing that because I want to be able to pronounce things correctly. I do think that there's a way to kind of let somebody know that they're mispronouncing something. Um, and I have, I've always received very like thoughtful and just kind, you know, information from folks letting me know how to pronounce something. And I actually learned a lot about, um, you know, like Swedish words in general and how things can be broken up. But when I figured out how to pronounce this and the person who helped me with that knows who she is and I appreciate her, um, it was kind of interesting to learn like how to pronounce it. So anyway, this is Nutiden. And I'm probably still doing it wrong, but I'm, I'm doing my best, I'm trying. Anyway, that is what this is knit with in addition to Biche Bouche uh, mohair, le, le, le petite mohair. Um, and it's in like a real deep like plum aubergine color. 
But anyway, I popped this on Gladys the other day and I was really excited about how it looked on her. Look at that. It looks so pretty. Now it fits Gladys a little large, but that's because Gladys is really small and probably needs to eat a few more cheeseburgers. But I tried it on myself the other day and it fit beautifully. And so this has kind of like, I don't know, it's been sitting here on Gladys in the corner, like tempting me to pick it back up again and knit some more on this. And so I'm kind of thinking that I want to um, work on this as a palette cleanser for my Franken sweater, not because I want to ignore my Franken sweater, and I might be saying this to you and it kind of probably comes off like, okay, Taylor, whatever helps you sleep at night. And maybe it is a little bit of that, but truly I have every intention of finishing that Franken sweater before the end of spring, before, before we even really get too far into spring because I want that sweater. But sometimes you need something that can cleanse the palette a little bit. And I have this beautiful sweater that has been knit to this, you know, at the, to this point. And I may as well pick it up and put some progress on it or give it, get some progress, make some progress with it um, and see if that doesn't help kind of cleanse the palette a little bit. So I just wanted to mention that because that's, you know, that's where my head's at right now. So anyway, this is my Versal sweater by Albina McLaughlin. And I'm going to go ahead and set Gladys back over here. Okay, so those are my thoughts. Let me know in the comment section what you're thinking um, about my decision to go back and fix the hemline of the Franken sweater. Maybe you kind of had a sneaking suspicion that that was an issue that needed to be addressed. You know, let me know. I like to hear about it. Please I'll get involved in that conversation um, because I love having those conversations with you down in the comments. Um, you guys always have really great insight, but that's where I'm at with that at this point. Okay, this brings me to my next, the next thing I wanted to share with you guys. Now, I, over on Instagram, I've been talking about wanting to knit a sweater for my husband. And then also, if you watched my, uh, one of my previous videos about sweaters that you can knit for a man, um, I mentioned my interest in knitting a sweater for my husband and that I was on the search for a really great sweater for him that provided me either the opportunity to knit with texture or the opportunity to knit with color. And I landed on a sweater that gives me the opportunity to knit with color. Now there are big plans in the works for launching a knit along that will include this particular sweater that I'll be knitting for my husband. I highly encourage you to head over to Instagram and check out this post that I pop up. You're going to see it on the screen over here because I am sharing information here about a future upcoming knit along that you might be interested in if you have yet to knit a sweater for your male significant other or for a very special man in your life. So definitely look into that. I will be talking more about this next week. So you don't have to worry about learning all about it right now. Just know it's coming. And if you do want to get a head start on the information, check out this post, but just know this week I will be sharing more information about this. But for right now, this is going to be a sweater for my husband and I have landed on the Atlas sweater by Jared Flood. It's a beautiful Lopi inspired circular yoke color work sweater and it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. So I chose this because I loved the silhouette of the sweater. It also has some really nice body shaping that narrows it down at the waist, which is not only a preference of mine, it's a preference of my husband's when it comes to wearing knit sweaters. I also loved the idea of knitting this in a woolen spun yarn, which is half the weight of a worsted spun yarn or a more traditional spun yarn that is, tends to be a little bit more on the heavier side. Um, for example, you can get the same yardage of a woolen spun yarn for 50 grams, where a regular traditional worsted spun yarn would be 100 grams, just to kind of give you an idea of the weight difference. I wanted to knit this sweater in a woolen spun yarn because there was going to be a lot of yarn involved and I didn't want it to be super heavy. I was thinking I was going to knit it with Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which is what it calls for. But when I went to Brooklyn Tweed um, to find the colors I was looking for, a lot of it was sold out. And actually a lot of it was sold out on in other retailers as well that offer Brooklyn Tweed. So I decided to go with Green Mountain Spinnery because I love Green Mountain Spinnery and they sell woolen spun yarn and it's beautiful. It comes in a beautiful array of colors and it's a really fantastic yarn. So what I'm going to share with you today are the colors that I've chosen and I have knit a little bit of a swatch um, using the color work motif or portion of it so that I could see the colors together and I could see how the yarn is working up and I've made some discoveries and I want to share that with you. So first things first, you know that it's the Atlas sweater. I'm going to pop that picture up again so you can see it. These are the yarns that I have chosen and this is Weekend Wool, which is a worsted to Aran weight yarn by Green Mountain Spinnery. So here's what we have. 
this will be my main color and these will be my two contrasting colors. And actually to give you an idea of that color distribution, I'm gonna grab a couple more skeins of this one. Okay, so here we have um, three skeins of my main color and the uh, two contrasting colors you can see there. So this main color is a real, it's called plum, but in person, it's definitely, it's definitely purple forward, but it's enough navy that it could really qualify as a navy color, kind of like a navy blue purple. And it's really, really cool. It's really a pretty color. And then the other two, this is pine warbler. It's just a really fun mustard gold color. And then natural gray. I'm really, really loving the colors for this. Um, I, okay, rewind. I'm really, really loving the colors for this. I have reservations about them together. Um, I was gung-ho about it. And then when they arrived, I was still really excited about it. And then when I started swatching, it's not that I don't like it because I do but I just have some reservations about it and I hope um, that it fits the bill because there's no going back. Like this is it, this is the project because this is a lot of yarn. I'm not even gonna show you how much yarn I had to purchase for this because it's it's a lot. I mean, this is an expensive sweater um, and that's an investment and I know that whatever it turns out, my husband will like it because he's seen the colors together and he's seen my swatch and he thinks that it's great. But I don't know, for some reason I'm having some reservations. And you can tell me what you think. Um, I mean, be careful, because I can't do anything about the yarn, like this is it. Um, so maybe a vote of confidence is important here. Um, but here is my swatch. Now you're going to notice in the middle of the swatch that there's a little um, light bulb stitch marker hanging. And that's because I needed to change my needle size and I wanted to know where I made that change so that I could, you know, discern the difference. So here, the bottom portion of the swatch, you're gonna notice that, and this is not blocked, um, you're gonna notice that the fabric is a little bit more bunchy. And that's because that was knit on a smaller needle size than this like top portion up here. So it was really, I'm happy that I made the choice to go up a needle size because everything here just lays out nicer um, and it's nice and flat. But that's it, that's the colors together. Now, of course, considering that this plum color is going to be my main color, there's going to be an awful lot of fabric in that plum color. So what you're seeing here will be just this yoke section. The distribution of color is not the same in this swatch because there's much less of that main color present in my swatch to give you an idea of how that's gonna look um, color ratio wise. But I don't know, I, I now that I'm looking at it in the camera, like in the screen on my camera, maybe that kind of steps, you know, it's like stepping away from the project a little bit. I'm, I'm liking it. I think it's gonna be really unusual in a good way, kind of a unique combination of colors. Sometimes yellow and purple bug me. And so I don't know why I would have chosen that in this particular instance. And maybe it's because I was expecting this to be more navy than it is. And so there's that. But when I imagine in my mind the whole sweater with the color distribution being what it will be when the sweater is finished with just the color work yoke and then the rest of the sweater being this like plum navy color, I actually think it could be kind of a showstopper, like a real statement sweater without being too like, look at me. <laughs> You know, I think it'll look cool. And when he wears it, folks might see it and be like, whoa, that's a cool sweater. As opposed to being like, whoa, that's a sweater. <laughs> you know, and I'm not going for that. So I think it's going to be kind of a statement piece, but not a super loud statement, if that makes any sense. I don't plan on casting that on right away. That's going to be a part of a knit along that is coming and it's coming February 14th, just to give you a little heads up. So plan on participating in a knit along starting February 14th, if you would like to knit a sweater for your man, uh, be it you know a husband or a significant other or a boyfriend or whatever, um, because that's what it's going to be about. So keep that in mind. You can find all the information over on Instagram and I will be providing you with more information on that come Wednesday of next week. It is always a pleasure being able to spend time with you and chat with you about the things that I've been working on. And honestly, sometimes it becomes kind of a moment of like decompression for me. Um, it has been one of those weeks where at the end of the week, you kind of wonder like, 
if you're able to keep it together to get through the next week. And I think that always happens when you have kids that are home from school and your routine gets shaken up. You have to reschedule things. All of this being here with you and chatting with you is just very therapeutic and very important to me. So thank you so much for taking the time to check out the podcast today. I hope you are having a lovely um, weekend and I hope you have a lovely week, whatever is in store for you but it just means a lot to have you here. So thank you very much. Definitely don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. If you would like to support the channel, don't forget to check out the merch shop. There's lots of cool stuff over there. Great conversation starters. You can see all that stuff linked down below the video window. If you would like to support the work that I'm doing here, go purchase a t-shirt or a coffee mug or a tote bag. It means more than you know. If you enjoyed yourself or took any value from the video today, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe and click the bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload new content here on the channel, which is every Wednesday and every Sunday. Until next week when we shall meet again, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.